Hello and welcome back to Humans in Society. This video focuses on the topic Information and Communication Technology under the subject Trends, Networks, and Critical Thinking in the 21st Century Culture. Information and Communication Technology, or ICT, is a combination of technological tools and resources that are used to manipulate and communicate information. This includes the Internet, wireless networks, cell phones, and other communication media. ICT has far-reaching implications, not just in business, but also in the delivery of social services, and quite recently, in the continuation of education. ICT is built on four dimensions, computing, communications, content, and human capacity. We will discuss each of these dimensions in depth. Computing is the process of using computer technology to complete a given goal-oriented task. The purpose of a computer is to perform calculations, store information, retrieve data, and process information. A computer has a program that tells it how to fulfill its purpose. A computer will do only what it is programmed to do. The following are emerging trends in computer technology. First. Transition to Broadband The World Bank and the Broadband Communication have described broadband as high-speed Internet access, which is always on and capable of undertaking multiple service provisions and functions. Broadband networks in developed countries have rapidly become the norm for regular households, but its deployment in developing countries is taking place at a much slower pace. The increase in broadband networks is supported by a considerable growth in international bandwidth capacity. Despite its increase, it has to be noted that huge discrepancies still exist between the international bandwidth per internet user and even bigger differences in bandwidth per inhabitant across the different regions in the world. Broadband is an essential element in the national ICT strategy. The availability of high-quality connectivity allows for effortless business transaction and a more vibrant consumption behavior. Infrastructure development must continue in order to achieve the national goals related to ICT. The second trend is cloud computing and cloud economy. Cloud computing is another innovation in the field of computer technology. Limited storage, corruption of files, expensive costs of computation and application hosting are just among the problems computer users encounter when they store their files in their personal hard drive or when they develop their own software programs. Cloud computing addresses these problems by connecting a large pool of systems, whether public or private, in order to provide an infrastructure for computation, data, and file storage. This model allows for easier transaction because different kinds of computing services can be delivered over the internet and can be accessed remotely for as long as you have a portable or mobile device with web access. The advantages of cloud computing to businesses and personal users are enormous. Aside from the aforementioned accessibility for multiple locations with the use of mobile and other PC platforms, huge savings are made on the expenses of hardware, software, and IT management since all these can be acquired with as much flexibility as needed by the consumer. The cloud economy or business transaction that deal with cloud computing services continue to hold much potential for expansion and greater connectivity. The third emerging trend is datafication, data management, and big data analysis. Datafication is the term used to describe an organizational trend to the process of putting together all tools and technology needed to transform a business into a data-driven enterprise. Datafication takes place mostly in developed countries where there is already a reliable and high-quality communication infrastructure, but also expected to rise in developing countries with a continuous upgrade of their computing and communications capabilities. Data management is the implementation of policies and procedures that provides the guidelines for data control. Data management is particularly useful in addressing problems on data that comes from duplicate sources, 
organizations that use cloud-based applications will find data management useful in synchronizing data across different systems. It provides access to accurate data when there is a need for ensuring free flow of information and communications. The fourth emerging trend in computer technology is smart system. A smart system uses a feedback loop of data, which provides information for sound decision making. This system monitors, measures, analyzes, communicates, and acts based on the information captured by the sensors. The four principles of smart infrastructures are data, analysis, feedback, and adaptability. A smart system has to be adaptable to varying demands and conditions, including future developments in the technology. The second dimension of ICT is communications. Communication technology is the transfer of messages or information among people and machines through the use of technologies. Types of communication technology are telephone, radio, TV, computer networks, and mobile phones. Emerging trends in communication include 1. The rapid spread of mobile telephony. This trend toward using mobile phones started in 2010 and continues to the present time, and has replaced the telephone as the main means of instant communication. Mobile phones also perform multiple other functions aside from its primary purpose as a telephone. It is now a digital device that can serve the function of a radio, a camera, a flashlight, an alarm clock, an audio and video player, and many more. The second trend is 3G and 4G networks and Wi-Fi connections. The spread of 3G connections and available Wi-Fi connections have increased the use of internet access through mobile phones, making it possible to access one's email address, do online banking, and video chat using a handheld device. Mobile internet users gain access through cyber cafes and other public access facilities. The third emerging trend is the creation of new mobile applications. The widespread availability and use of smartphones have led to the creation of new mobile applications or apps. Small computer programs that allow mobile devices to substitute for personal computers. The third dimension of ICT is content. The meaningful usage and deployment of ICT is carried out if it is applied to specific development goals like literacy, poverty reduction, and sustainable development. This means that the relevance of ICT is tied to its availability to be integrated into the delivery of traditional services like education, businesses, and employment. Transformation of these traditional services means having e-learning, e-commerce, and e-employment. ICT enables content creation to communicate and exchange ideas through platforms like social networking sites, video conferencing, and instant messaging apps. The fourth dimension of ICT is human capacity. It is important to acquire all the necessary skills and knowledge related to ICT in order to understand, participate actively in, and benefit fully from ICT and the knowledge economy. Improving human capacity means ICT in education and training at all levels of society, including distance learning. It also involves the promotion of e-literacy skills, particularly for women and girls, young people, and other disadvantaged groups. Lastly, there has to be capacity building among leaders and operational staff in developing countries and less developed countries, including local communities and the rural and underserved areas and information professionals. ICT has the following benefits. Direct job creation. The ICT industry is and continues to be one of the largest sources of employment. From the core ICT group, the greatest number of establishments are found in ICT-enabled services, broadcast media, and computer hardware, while the ones that employ the greatest number of workers are IT BPM, electronics and semiconductors, and computer hardware firms. Two, 
emergence of new services and industries. The emergence of ICT paved the way for public services to gain greater accessibility by using online channels and mobile phones. ICT has also led to the creation of a completely new sector, which is the app industry. Third, transformation of the workforce. ICT has pushed the boundaries of the workplace structure. Being employed does not have to mean being physically present in an actual company. A new platform called Microwork, which is literally the smallest unit of work in a virtual assembly line, can employ people located at remotest areas and bring income without even stepping out of their house. Fourth, business innovation. ICT provides all the needed tools for business expansion and innovation. Most businesses prefer to fully employ all that ICT has to offer in terms of bringing more efficiency in the manufacturing, marketing, and distribution of goods and services. However, ICT can also pose several challenges. For instance, personal computers are expensive with additional costs for maintenance, security, upgrades, and accessories. Connectivity remains expensive and limited and unreliable in rural and remote areas. Some content are not meaningful or locally relevant to end users. Computer literacy remains a challenge and does not maximize the full gains of ICT. And finally, there is a digital divide between developed and underdeveloped countries. The impact of ICT in social and political movements. ICT facilitates collective action in ways never thought possible. Email, websites, chat rooms, blogs, and bulletin boards enable efficient communication, organization, and even deliberation within social movements of any size. Second, decentralized, horizontal social movements coalesce online. Online movements can now operate successfully without the hierarchical centralized command structures of the past, and leaders can even act with more freedom within the movement. Today, there are rapidly assembling, self-organizing online groups of protesters that coordinate horizontally without central leadership. Third, social movements use the internet to access and bypass mainstream media. Successful movements seek media coverage to amplify their concerns and frame pertinent issues to the public. Although mass media audiences have long been available to the few groups with access to decentralized media apparatus, the Internet is now closing the media gap for newer, less established groups. Websites allow movements to control their self-representation to the public. Fourth, social networking sites facilitate faster, real-time protest. The movement spawned organically with no centralized leadership, simply spreading by word of mouth and morphing to respond to developments as they arose. Fifth, future directions in research and implications for radicalization. Internet optimists argue that ICTs have given voices to those who did not have them and have had a democratizing impact around the world. Radical groups have been organizing and taking collective action over the internet, especially due to low operating costs. Radical groups have enthusiastically adopted technology to help them reach their intended goals. Online venues have become the meeting place of choice due to the availability of communicating messages to a large number of individuals at a low cost. We end this lesson with a quote from David Wong. New technology is not good or evil in and of itself. It's all about how people choose to use it. The ideas discussed in this video are based on the content standards of the Department of Education. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson.